in the Florida Keys. So just kind of having some relaxation and downtime. I'm certified natural healthcare practitioner, Erin Thole, and I am super excited to have with me one of my best friends ever, Bertina Seaborg. Today, she lives out here in the Keys. And so I'm out here spending some time with her and we thought this would be a fantastic opportunity just to talk about some of the transitions and the different emotional and like physical shifts um, that we've both been going through, very different things, but still, you know, um, big shifts in life and just how we've handled those and coping and how to know like it's time to, to go, it's time to move forward, even though sometimes that decision is super difficult and painful. So thanks for being here, Christina. Yes, thank you. And I love having you here. I feel like a great inspired energy, just you, just your presence and just you being here. So it's been a great time for both of us. Same, same. Yeah, we really feed off of each other's mm -hmm. energy really, really well. And like Chris said earlier, he's like, you guys are just two peas in a pod. Yes. I was like, we are, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, so Bertina and I used to live together. We worked together. We worked out together. Worked out together. We were on the board of directors at the Good Earth Food, food Co-op co together. together. Like yeah. We did everything together for years. So it's fantastic to, to be back in the same space and, and doing this together. So... Yeah, so today we're talking about transitions. Um, you know, Bertina just moved down here from Minnesota not too long ago, so that was a huge life transition for her. Um, I recently got divorced, so obviously that was a huge life transition for me as well. Um, so with those transitions always comes the hard stuff, you know, the struggles and like the going through the fire before you get to the other side and you know, things start to look good again. So, um, Bertina, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your story and how you ended yeah. up here? <laughs> um, well, I honestly don't feel like I'm going through a fire. I That's actually good. feel like I'm going <laughs> through a cradled softness, a, a real softening, actually. Um, and I'm I'm softening into that softening. But yeah, as Aaron said, my name is Bertina. I owned Core Healing a Wellness Center in Northern Minnesota, and I've been doing body work for 20 years. Um, core Healing, we had body work, colon hydrotherapy, and hyperbaric oxygen chambers. Um, and my life was in Brainerd, Minnesota, in Northern Minnesota. And it was fine. It was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. My income was good. My friends were great. I loved my gym. Everything was fine. And I went on a trip to Moab, Utah last May. And it was a trip that was planned with one of my best friends. And she, at the last minute, couldn't make it. She had COVID, legit, could not walk up the stairs without pain and agony. So I went on the trip by myself, no big deal. I travel all over by myself, I always have. I went there to see another friend. And the last day that I was there, I was in my cabin room and I went over to the corner to turn on the AC because I hate sleeping when it's hot. And I turned around and a whole different man that I had never seen before was standing right here in front of my body as I turned around. And I was like, oh, like, this is weird. And I tried to push by him and he would not let me push by him. And this feeling came over my body from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. And I knew that the next 20 minutes of my life wasn't gonna be fun. And he pushed me down on the bottom bunk of a bunk bed and proceeded to arm bar into my throat and try and strangle and choke me out and kill me. And in that um, moment, there was a blackness that was easy to soften into and the question arose, 
am I living my best life? And I didn't really have time to think exist about existential questions at that moment, but I immediately went to my baby nieces. They're the light of my light and light of my life. And I knew um, I just wasn't going to leave them at that time. And then I was like, dude, if I died right now and I never got myself to the ocean, I'd be pissed. And I held the guy off as much as I could to breathe. It swelled up my face. It swelled my eyes shut. I scratched. I gouged at all the orifices. I yelled at him. I screamed at him. He never said a word to me. And I just kept him off my neck as much as I could because if I could breathe, if I could breathe into my musculature, into my body, I could hold it. It was, it was enough to, to hold him off my neck. And then I rolled over onto my stomach and then he lost his hold and I got my legs under me. And once I had my feet under me, I was able to just ground my strength. And then it was like, you know, this is going to be a fight, you know, like, what do you want to do? And like three minutes after I got onto my stomach, he fled out the door. I shut it. I called 911. It was the longest two minute wait of my life. And um, there are two victim advocates in that Moab County. One was on vacation and one was in her RV on the same property my cabin was at at the same time. And she saw all the emergency vehicles and she rushed over to my cabin and she, her, I won't say her name, but she was an angel, like a four foot tall angel just next to my side. And she held that space for that trauma. She had seen all the signs on my body, everything that your body does during that involuntarily. Yeah. And she was a liaison between the cops and the paramedics and me where they're just trying to find the guy, get the questions. But she held that space for that pain and that trauma. And I'm, I'm forever indebted to her for that. And um, she drove me that morning to catch a flight two hours in her own vehicle. I couldn't drive. My left eye was swelled shut for a week from the pressure. And um, my brother picked me up from the airport with my baby nieces. And that whole week, my clients brought me to practitioners to just help the trauma out of my neck. And I, um, I just... I'm good at like letting it flow, just like letting that crying come, just celebrating that releasing. Um, there wasn't many people that I would have probably trusted that two days after that, but I did get to a practitioner to, to get some of that trauma out of my body. Um, yeah, my clients were there for me. Everyone was driving me around. Everyone brought me food. There was so much love that week. And I was so happy to see my baby nieces, even though I looked like hell. Um, <laughs> I've never been more happy to see them. And after that, uh, it was very clear to me, which I've known my whole life deep down inside that I would end up by the sea. And it was very clear to me the sense of urgency that I needed to get to the ocean. And um, I didn't know anything else about any other parts of my life. I didn't know how anything else was gonna work out. I, I didn't know about any of the other pieces to the pie. I only knew this one thing that I just had to get to the sea. I just, I had to get to the ocean. It was time. And so I, um, I went on a trip to Southwest Florida. That was with one of my other friends. It, would, it had been planned in advance and I used it as an exploratory trip to just kind of go from Clearwater down to Venice through Siesta, you know, kind of feeling out the vibe and seeing where I was being called to. And um, of course I ended up meeting a random, making making a random new friend uh, with a guy that had a condo on Siesta. It was after the drum circle at the beach, one of the most epic drum circles here on Siesta Beach. And um, I went home after that trip was thinking, where do I want to plant myself, feeling out some options. And I thought I'm going to call this guy and he goes, I'm going to go stay at my partner's house for 10 days. You come stay here, see if you like it. And 
he ended up staying with his partner and I got the condo across the street from the beach on Siesta. And um, I sold my business. I left everyone that I knew. I lived in Minnesota my whole life. I've been doing natural health work since I was 19. I left the gym. I used I was doing CrossFit and you know lifting and physique show, and um, I exited it uh, for the sea. And my whole life, I spent always trying to get back to the ocean. And now I can look out my lanai, and she's right there every day in the same spot. And my soul is quiet. There's a contentness and a peace that I can't explain. And I've gone through a lot of transitions. My breathing has changed. The food that my body wants has changed. My exercise has changed, therefore creating so much space in my body for things to come up that weren't coming up before or things to come up that for me to examine or for me to um, move to the next level with, the next chapter. So, and I'm even just working, I mean, not that this is bad, it's amazing. I'm working a base desk job, the least amount as possible. I go in, I love the coworkers, I do the job, I don't bring it home, I'm not answering phone calls, I'm not scheduling anything, like I have no office to run. And all my energy is for me. And it's for me to enjoy this peace and, and this softening, kind of like I alluded to in the beginning. Um, I have felt like I've been going, going, going in my life and being tough and being strong. And I don't want to be tough and strong anymore. It's a, it's a softening that I'm going through, to be honest. I love that. Yeah. That's. Man, that story still gets me. Like, I just, oh. But you took something insanely awful and, like, made something beautiful out of it, really. Well, yeah. um, I truly believe that we, we map out our lives on the other side beforehand. And, you know, I never felt an ounce of angst towards the guy. I know all my friends have. Yeah. My brother for sure. Yeah. You know. Um, and I get that. But I uh I'm I'm thankful for the guy because I live in like I did. I I took the best out of it. Um, didn't give it my power. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, I listened to my inner voice. I sometimes it really has to hit me over the head super strong. Some sometimes it'd be nice to not be so thick skulled. But yeah, it was time for me to move to the sea and this is the best place I've ever lived. I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. Something about it for me is like complete in my life. Yeah. Yeah, this is a great place. So yeah, I got down here and you know, it's, it's a nice county to live in and I need to find a job. And I honestly thought it would be so easy. I can just get a, a bartending gig, right? How hard is that? I can just work at a brewery, right? Done it before. Sure. I had a bartending interview at the hub on the island. Completely failed. Like, flopped miserably. It was a live interview where they just put you behind the bar. And she's like, so, you know, daiquiris. And I'm just like, we don't make a lot of frozen drinks in Minnesota. Like, I just, it completely, it was terrible. It was very defeating. <laughs> I applied so many places. Yeah. I, don't, I, I always own my own business. I don't know how to write a resume. Yeah. I haven't been to an interview in forever. Yeah. yeah. In like decades. So. Yeah. 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 That was all a learning, a learning process. Um, I knew I'm definitely attracted to the sea and a job with the sea. And I did manage to get a job coordinating on water towing for people stranded in the ocean. So it has to do with the water, um, but it's not, it's, and it's good for now, you know, it's fine for now, but yeah. 
So any kind of active job with the C is, I think, a little bit what I'm leaning towards. Do you want to tell them what you, what we've been talking about for the last couple of days, mainly yesterday, about the beach event? Oh, okay. This is a potential idea for something that everyone listening might want to participate in sometime once it's yeah. up and running. So I would love to, um, I would love just to do spiritual boat or beach events. And basically what that would entail is originally I thought it would be getting on a boat, arriving at a beach. I'll have a tent set up. We'll use the first 20 minutes to do a beach walk. And that's where you find any kind of shell or any kind of piece of seaweed or some type of ocean yeah. or sand nature a nature item yeah that you bring back and contribute to like the collective altar everybody comes back we do a clearing obviously with cedar like a smudging and just clearing everyone before they go into the sacred space we set up the altar and it's going to be something that involves your five senses so and it's going to be themed i'll have uh, multiple different themes one would be like a full moon theme one would be um, a heart opening theme. One would be maybe a cacao ceremony. One could be um, a new beginnings. And I got this idea because there's so many boat tours. It's mimosas and dolphin tours or bar hopping. And that is not what I, and two out of two of us yeah. don't always, don't want to do that when we come on our vacation or when we come down to the beach. We want to be feeling vibrant. We want to leave even more you know even more vibrant than we came here and so i just kind of thought a lot of people take trips for reasons like all right i'm going to get through this or i'm going to let this go in my life and this is a milestone and why don't we anchor that vibration in ceremony together so you can carry that through your experience here your trip here and then go back in that same like higher vibration yeah. So that's kind of what I was thinking is spiritual boat tours or spiritual tours on the beach mm -hmm. and themed and involving your five senses. So there's your smell, your sense of smell will be involved. For example, like a heart opening ceremony would involve probably a rose spray. Yeah. You're going to have the sense of sound with the guided meditation, with the singing bowl. You'll have the sense of um, your taste will be enlightened probably through like a kava drink or some kind of adaptogen drink of some sort that would be cool and refreshing on the beach. So I'm trying to, I would like to incorporate, yeah, spiritual events on the beach or spiritual boat tours that encompass all of your five senses. And of course, if you are coming down with a group and you have a special intention in mind, it is a fully customizable event. Yes. Yeah. So that that's is one of my fun idea. ideas. And I love it. And I want you to. Aaron does. Take it and run with it. Want yes. me to take this and run with it. <laughs> but Aaron, I am like, I mean, I work as least amount as possible right now. I found the best yoga place around the block. It's fantastic. It's, it's fantastic. I go to the beach. I'm tan all the time. I lay on my crystal mat and I breathe. I don't. There's not a sense that I necessarily need you'll to know. add anything at yeah, this time. Yeah. You know, you'll know when the time is to do it. Yeah, and that's um, that's exactly right. But it is a we are meeting else. like in different in different modes. We're meeting, I think, yeah. in different like vibes. But <laughs> mine is like you're like very chill, chill, and I crave the chill. But at the same, and this is the balance that I'm trying to find right now. And I've been doing a lot of like semantic healing practices and programs and breathing and just trying to release like a tremendous amount of trauma and just like process everything that's been going on over the last comment, number of years. Um, and just, you know, having gone through a divorce and having little kids at the same time, you know, and like there's this and running your own business and running my own business and having tentacles. like a couple of, yeah, like many divisions, irons in the fire. Yeah, yeah. For lack of a better word, like divisions of my business, like there's multiple irons in the fire. Exactly. And I've operated on this high level of anxiety, like, 
there's a term for it that I've started reading about in some like the trauma, um, um, like studying and, and programs that I've been participating in. It's like high functioning anxiety where it's like to the outside world, everyone's like, man, you got your shit together. You're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. You're throwing Halloween parties for your kids and planning all these activities for them and their friends to do at said Halloween parties. You're running a business and you're growing like two legs of your business and you're mentoring this person and you're still going to the gym every day and you're doing this and this and this and this. Like, you have it together. And inside I'm like vibrating, <laughs> like stress, you know? It's a like million no times. Space. Like no space, you know? So I'm trying to find this balance. And since my divorce, it's been a lot easier to like come home to myself and get grounded and be balanced. And that was a very hard decision um, because I have two little kids. So my decisions don't just affect me. Like they're going to affect my little people as well. But I couldn't stay in a relationship where my stress level, my fight or flight, my anxiety, my just like sense of self was just so scattered and I didn't feel whole and I didn't feel supported. Like I didn't feel a lot of things, you know, like, and my anxiety level was eating me alive. And I'm like, everything I feel trickles down to my children. Like children are little sponges and they absorb and they know more than what we give them credit for. And they see and they feel everything. Like there were questions that my son had or comments, like statements, um, observations that my son would make to me. And I'd be like, oh God, like (laughs) this can't continue. Like, do you remember an example? I... I do, but I don't want to say it like on camera, (laughs) but there was one in particular that hit me like a ton of bricks that he asked me and I was like, oh, he, he knows, like he knows that this is is not like, this is not a healthy relationship. And so it came to a point where I was like, I cannot, like the most tragic thing for me as a mother would be my kids growing up thinking that this was normal, that this was a healthy relationship. This is just the way that it is. And I was like, I can't, I can't do that to them. So you have to kind of like choose your heart, you know, like, do I stay in the relationship and let it like, Like, I felt like my anxiety level was so high. Like, I was going to become, like, seriously ill, like, from the amount of anxiety that I had. And I had talked to my therapist about it, like, many times. And she was like, yeah, like, this is bad. Like, you're the level of anxiety that you're living with on a day-to-day basis is not okay, you know? And so it was kind of like one of those moments where there's a lot of things coming to a head. It wasn't like one big fight or big event or, you know, something like that. It was like all these things compile and it's like, I've lost myself. I know he probably has lost his self, like in this relationship, like neither of us are getting what we're, what we need. There's no understand. It's like I'm talking one language, he's talking another language. Like it just, and we had tried different things, you know, and it just had come to a point where I'm like, I cannot let my kids think that this is a good relationship, that this is healthy, that this is normal, that this is what they should be going into or looking for as an adult. And it just came down to to that. And wanted to show them that your number one responsibility above all else is to yourself. Because if you're true to yourself, you're also going to be true to all of those other people that you love 
in your life. Like my kids are happy. That doesn't mean that they don't have questions or they're not confused about certain things. And, you know, Shannon, my older one is, you know, able to like express those questions and stuff like that a little bit more than Sersha because she's, you know, she's just about to be two. So I know that it's going to be, it's, it's hard on some level for, for them for sure. And I knew that, you know, going into it, but I think it would be harder for them to grow up and to have this idea of dysfunction. And then as adults have to try to like work through that and rewind that, and like relearn like how to be in a relationship. And so, yeah, I just didn't want to do that to them, you know? And I know there's yeah. multiple schools of thought on that. And I've talked to multiple people who have been like, you know, my parents got divorced when I was whatever age and it was the best thing ever because then I didn't have to be in a household where I was walking on eggshells or I had high anxiety because my parents were always like at it with each other and stuff like that. And I was like, when enough people had told me that so that same story about like, man, I'm so glad my parents got divorced. And with that same reason, I was like, man, okay. Because for a long time, I was feeling like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. You yeah, know? That's like, no matter legit. what, I'm making a bad decision. But then once I started to talk to more people who their parents, you know, or they themselves had made that decision and their kids were thriving and stuff like that. And then reading more articles on that very thing where it's like, as long as your parents are happy and they're, you know doing the best that they can for themselves like that is a mirror to the children of like how to be happy how to work through things that don't go the way that you thought they were gonna go like nobody hopefully gets married thinking like well maybe i'll just get divorced if this doesn't work out like you don't then what's the point of getting married you know so it's it was definitely a time of like just back and still, you know, just having to answer questions from the kids and stuff like that. And I try to just maintain as much of like an open heart and loving space for them. And I always tell them, you know, like you can ask me anything. We can talk about anything that you want to talk about. I know this is a really hard thing and it's, it's hard for adults. It's most definitely hard for little people. Like, it's harder for you. It is. It's always going to be harder for them than it is, you know, for us adults in terms of, like, processing and comprehending because their little minds aren't mature enough and stuff like that. But kids are really resilient. And so, yes. and they feed off of our energy. Like I said, they're like right. sponges. And, and so yeah. what sticks out the most from what you said is because they do mirror you know, and reflect on and our little sponges and so open and amazing, like how do we keep ourselves from losing ourselves in life? How do we stay true to ourselves? I have this new little practice that I do. And I know there's a lot of people that do this because I got this idea from another practitioner. But um, my foot is going to sleep. She... Um, practitioner, whenever she's about to make a decision, it doesn't have to be a big decision. It can be like, do I want a burger? Or do I want a salad? You know, kind of thing. It can be about food. It can be about, you know, especially if you're trying to make like healthy choices and stuff like that. It can be about a life transition and it can be about a social event, you know, that you're invited to. Anything. Just anything. Just sit with it for a second. If I think about having you know, going to this, this party that I'm invited to, but it's past my bedtime, you know, does that feel expansive or does it feel cons like constricting and contracting? So you're tuning into the center of your chest. So you're tuning into, into your, your inner knowing, into your heart and asking yourself, does this feel expansive? If it feels tight, then that's constricting. Does it feel constricting? No. Yeah. Exactly. And if it feels like light and okay, that's a yes. Exactly. Okay. 
So since I've, you know, gone through this, I kind of describe it as like a fire. Like you go through the fire and then you get back on the, on the other side and you're like, you look back and you're like, Oh shit. Like I went through this, this huge thing. And when you're in it, like you're over, like I was anyway, like overanalyzing everything. I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I was most definitely not at my like epitome of health <laughs> in any way, shape or form. Um, there's a lot of people at mid gym that are like, are you okay? You know? Um, but which you, you probably you weren't. And that's okay. I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. You deserve you, all the love, no matter if you're okay or not. It, <laughs> you get through the fire matter. and then on the other side, you breathe and you kind of reflect and then you learn different tools. So like now I'm doing this, you know, sitting with it is this expansive or is this something that's like restrict feels restrictive kind of thing. I wish I would have started doing that like while I was going through the divorce and stuff like that. Cause I think it would have made me a, a lot more grounded and centered because I was not, I was a mess like during that, a very well held together mess. Like I remember when I was looking for my house that I own now and the owner of the CrossFit gym that I go to, I told him a couple of things, you know, here and there and stuff like that. At one point he's like, well, you something to be, this wasn't his exact words, but pretty much like, he's like, you hide it really well. Like you, you seem like you, you have it under control. Like you have it well put together, like almost like a kudos to you for not having a mental breakdown at the gym every day, you know? But that doesn't it's mean not that something to be proud of. No, exactly. I was like, what I need is to lay on the floor and cry. Right. And you not know? letting, not but. allowing yourself to do that, not loving yourself, like equally for your pain, you know, and your joy is where we could be better at yeah. staying true to ourselves. But yeah. it is a weird thing that goes on with like, be resilient, be tough, be strong. Like, yes. No, no, <laughs> no. And so this be soft, exactly be in the receiving mode. The like, softening wow. thing that you're talking about now, I'm like, that's what I need more of. And that's kind of like what I'm doing here. These you are, days. yes. I'm really happy about that. Is I'm going to bed at eight o'clock, laying on a crystal mat, laying on a crystal mat, going to the beach, meditating, journaling, yeah, going to yoga every day, like, yeah. It's fantastic, and I can just feel my soul like singing and being like, "Oh yes, like that's this. what I'm saying." You know, I'm feeling like that every day. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it is. I moved down here and was like, I just want to do yoga and live by the beach, and I that brought life. that into my reality. I made that my reality, and going from lifting and and tightening and contracting your muscles all the time to completely basically stopping and just going into lengthening has created space in my body, which has created space in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. So I've tried space to, been key. yes, I've been attempting. I just need to find a way to make it work to do yoga like once a week, whether that's at my house, at the studio, whatever. Well, and but, after this trip, I feel like this not, is the catalyst. We don't want to like, more like stuff into your schedule it's actually about True. taking things away, away. that's it's about true. selling your whole <laughs> business for me it was selling everything getting rid of everything the place i live my clothes like my furniture everything i own is in that nice sized bedroom yeah <laughs> but that's everything that yeah. i own and then one hyperbaric chamber that i brought down but aside from that like and then a car that's it that's that yeah. is all that i own that in and of itself was liberating a huge yeah releasing yeah. process and it changed my perspective on how much i buy like where i spend my money i had spent so much money on clothes and what did i end up doing giving them away throwing them away selling stuff Yep. Um, so yeah, that's changed that releasing and how what you really need. That really changed my perspective on what you really need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yoga has created a lot of space, and um, then I did a pelvic floor 
breathing class. Yes. Had no idea. I've oh, been breathing wrong. <laughs> Most people don't know, know that. that. Yeah. So yeah, I took this seminar at, at the yoga place, of course, that I'm love I love. And you like you breathe way down like into your pubic area like you're gonna fart. And I'm serious. Yeah, I yeah, know. Because I'm doing it right now. And then you relax or, or then you exhale. Just activate that core a little bit. Let me uncross my legs. Mm -hmm. Breathe into your pelvis like you're gonna fart. Exhale with like one out of ten of core. And for me, it's I can feel the whole center of my body relaxing and expanding, and my di my digestion starts to turn and churn and relax where it's usually i'm walking around like holding it in i don't know everybody does this tight upper abs chest. or whatever yeah yeah mm -hmm. so and that's a practice like it i can't is. i can't you can't just do it everywhere like I, I have to be like laying down so a lot of times like that's what i do is i just lay down and practice breathing and um i have been doing a lot more of that been doing a lot more just breathing meditating some stretching here and there. I do know that my body needs some yoga. I just, I'll know how to fit it in when I can. Yeah, you will. But for now, just like, yeah, you're right. Like adding more things isn't necessarily the thing. No, it's about space. Yeah, it really is. Like Stretching more is fine. That's good enough for now. I mean, when you create space in your body, you create space in your mind and vice versa. When you create space in your mind, you create space in your body. They go hand in hand and that's where what's important comes up has the space to come up right if it's too scheduled and on the dot and this and that there's no room mm -hmm. there's no room for what you're supposed to see to come up yeah. and when you see when you have that space and you can allow what comes up to come up and obviously just love everything because we planned everything and you make no mistakes and it's just love. A love is the only vibration that exists. Yeah. Um, you do stay true to yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is the best thing yes. that we can do for each other. True. Exactly. So, I think that's a good ending point. Okay. <laughs> well said. Wonderful. Awesome. So, hopefully this little live session here in the Florida Keys and it helps you to ask yourself some tough questions, maybe start down a rabbit hole of exploration of self, um, help you in some way. If you have questions, ask your heart. If you have questions, tune into your heart. Yeah. We're not in our minds. We're not in our heads. If you have a exactly. question, you know, you know what you planned. You are your own intelligence your higher self is always always connected to your divinity because you're made of the divine light so you know 